Hello guys, I'm Heyman. I wanted to put a small spy camera into my workshop. I didn't want to go in for the CCTV setup which comes with the recorder, CCTV cameras, cables and power supply because first of all that is very expensive and then I don't have the space to put all that. So I wanted to make something by myself. I had two options for this. I had to use the Arduino Uno, a, a small camera and a memory card to store all the images in case of any unwanted intrusion. But then this is a lot of work and more to that the Arduino does not have Wi-Fi to connect my camera to, the, to my router and have access to it any, every, everywhere. So after digging I discovered that there was a better option so I came across this ESP32 camera board. This is very good. Let me show you why. This, this little board right here has already the memory card slot on it. So it's going to replace this one from the Arduino. It has a small camera on it. So we're not going to use this camera anymore. And then we have a, the ESP32 microcontroller, which is a 32-bit microcontroller and it has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth all on the same controller. So this is the very best option for this project. In this video today, I'm going to show you how to set this up. And in, the, and in the next video, we are going to use it to make an intrusion detection camera whereby an intrusion is detected using this PIR sensor and then it takes an image and stores into a, me a memory card. This is the ESP32 development board. As you can notice, this board has more pins compared to the ESP32 camera board. The reason why is because the ESP32 camera board, despite the fact that they both share the same controller, the ESP32 camera board is using many pins of the ESP32 controller to connect to the memory card and the camera. That's why on the ESP32 microcontroller board, you have 30 pins and the, on the ESP32 camera board, you have only 16. On this ESP32 camera board, you have digital pins, you have serial pins for programming, and you have power pins, where on the power pins, we have 5 volt and we have 3.3 volt which means that we can connect both 3.3V and 5V on this device. As you can notice, this board does not have any USB port on it, like the ESP32 or the Arduino, which means that this board is not aimed at people who don't have the basics of electronics. At least you should be able to identify which one is 5V and which one is ground to be able to power this thing. So, to connect this to the computer, we have to use this little USB to TTL converter which will connect to the serial, connect to the serial pins of the ESP32 board and then flash in the code that we want into this microcontroller to perform the application that we want it to do. So, now that we have everything here, it is time for us to set this up and then I will show you how to connect this to the computer and then get it working so we begin by first of all plugging the camera onto the board so we just have to lift up this little connector then we lock it in place so we have the camera already hooked up to the board and then we connect the ESP to TTL converter to the to the camera board so we have to first of all begin with the supply now we go to connecting the serial terminals for programming
So now that we have everything properly set up, it is time for us to connect this device to the computer and then I will show you how to program this. So we're going to flash the program into this device. Before we go into programming, we have to make sure that we pull down the programming pin to ground. So when this is done, we now go to the computer and then we connect our device. So now that we have the, the device connected to the computer, the next thing we have to do is to make sure that we press on the button reset, which is found right here. So our device is ready for programming. Let's go to the computer and let me show you how to do that. So here we are on the computer right now. What we're going to do in the first place is that we have to make sure that we have the Arduino IDE installed in our computer. We already have it installed in this computer, so what we're going to do now is just to bring that up. I'm going to post the link to the uh, Arduino IDE in the description box below, so that if you don't have it, you can just click on it and download and start working. So let's bring the Arduino IDE up. So we have the Arduino, the Arduino IDE up. Now that we have the Arduino IDE in the computer, the next thing we have to do is to make sure that we have the ESP32 board installed in the Arduino IDE. And to do that, you just have to come to File, go to Preferences, and then in this little field right here, you copy this link that we have in this field and paste it there. And then you go on OK. I'm going to post this um, link in the description box below so you can copy and install in your Arduino IDE. So after we have it already pasted in this little field here, what we have to do is to click on OK. And then make sure that we have our internet connected to the computer. And then we go to, to Tools. And then we go to Board and go to Board Manager. And click so when we click on board manager the link that we post that we pasted right in the preferences will now come up and then we will, we're going to install the ESP32 library we already have it installed in this computer so there's no need going through that again okay now that we have everything properly installed we now come to examples we go to ESP32 and then we locate camera. When we locate camera, we now go to camera web server. When we click on the camera web server, this little window comes up. So this is the program that we're going to use to flash our ESP32 camera board. But we are not going to use this one simply because we already have that installed um, open on the other window. So let's close this one. So now we have this already open. So the next thing we have to do here is to come and change some settings. First of all, as you can see right here, we have this variable, which is the SSID. This is the server. This is the, this is the network ID of our IP camera. So we, we're going to come here and then change this variable, which is the name that we, we expect to have whenever our Wi-Fi opens, whenever our, whenever the computer searches our, the, the, um, our, our camera on the network. So we're going to put here chip just for, for putting sick. So we go there and put that IP, chip IP camera. And then the password here is Herman, which is my name. So, after changing these this two, this two things, the next thing we have to do is to open the serial monitor to verify that the connection between our camera and the computer is properly made. So let's open that. And then we go to the camera and then click on the button reset to see if we're going to receive some data on the serial monitor. So as you can see right there, our camera is set up for programming that's why you can see here it says waiting for download so now that we are sure that the camera is waiting for 
download we just have to come here and then click on this button upload it's going to compile the program and then upload into our board but one thing we have to always make sure we, we enable before start working with this camera is to make sure it's, is to know the type of camera we are using right here you see the, this this uh, commented statement says select camera models right here our camera board is the ai thinker so we selected we enabled the define camera model ai thinker as you can see right here our device is uploading it's going to take a while so let's just be patient and observe so the thing is done uploading you can see it written right here so the next thing we're going to do now is to go back to the camera board and disable the programming settings so we disconnect the pull down thing and then we click on we open our serial monitor and then click on the button reset so as you can see right here on the on the, on the serial monitor you can get the ip address of this camera you can you have the port for still images and you have the port for for live stream which means that you can get images from this camera via the web browser on this port and you can get live stream live video from this on, on this port so what we're going to do now is to go on our networks and locate if everything is properly set up on our network right here we're going to find our camera so you can see right here this is cheap ip camera that we have here you're going to get it exactly the same on our networks this is it so we just click on there and then we connect okay so you can see that we are now connected to this camera but with no internet so what we're going to do now is to go to the browser and enter the ip address that we had on the serial monitor right here you can see this ip address we are going to copy this ip address onto our browser so we open the browser and then we enter the ip address i believe it's 192 dot one six eight one nine two dot one six eight dot four dot one and let's click open that as you can see right here this little page comes up on this page right here you can we can also capture images still you can see here we have guest still we can have we also have a start stream and we have enroll faces so we just come up here and then change the resolution okay we change the resolution and then we come down here now and you can capture images directly from the from the camera so you can see our camera picks up start taking images directly from the camera just by clicking on this button we can take a picture We can also watch a live video from the, this camera by clicking start stream so right there you can see that okay we are done with this part let's stop this the live stream And then we go um and this page only comes up when we say when, when we type this eip address if we want to send in a if we want to send in a web link directly to get this particular ip address to get this part to get the image directly we just come in here we say dot 80 and then we say slash capture
but these names could be changed in the program i'm going to show you how so we just click on there and then we see we get when we refresh the page we have images directly from the camera and we can also watch we can also have live video from this by putting now the connecting to the live stream port so we just go in and uh, there we have it so we can watch video directly from this the good thing about this is that we can also do the same thing with um, with our cell phone so let me show you let me show you how we can come here we just let's just connect to the camera okay so we can connect directly to this camera via on our, on our cell phone let's connect to the network okay so we go to the network so the wi-fi is the wi-fi is open and then we can have we have here our network which you can see right there hopefully we have cheap ip camera we connect yeah it's already connected by the way so we go we now go to the browser and then we type in we type in the ip address 192.6 is 168.4.1 then we say go so we have that same page that we have on the computer on right here so we're just going to bring that up and get still images directly from the camera so you can see right there we have still images directly from the camera so we can get the live stream by clicking on that button so we can see, we can use this camera as an IP camera if we want. One other thing that we can do with this thing is to send that same IP address. 192, then we put in the port 81 slash stream. Then we have a live stream of our workshop. This is really interesting. This is a really interesting module. And I intend to use this for a lot of my projects. So if you like this video, guys, give me a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.